I started messing around with Schlier and Imaging about a month ago. I had no idea what each piece of equipment was doing, and it felt more like I was performing some sort of ritual as opposed to a scientific experiment. Put a light here, a mirror there, take your knife and cut the light in half at just the right point, and then magically, you get to see invisible air. And the literature, at least for me, wasn't much help. There were a lot of observations I'd personally make with my own eyes that flatly contradicted the consensus. For example, if all that equipment is necessary, then how come I can see the gas from the lighter using just the sun? Or I suppose a better question is, why does the light from the sun passing through this invisible gas create an image we can see in the first place? Light from the sun all comes from roughly the same point in the sky. The sun can be considered a point light. It comes down and hits this paper about equally across the whole surface, making the paper appear uniformly bright. But if we put something, like the gas from this lighter, in the path of the light, some of the light is refracted, or deflected slightly. The result is a pattern of bright and dark spots directly corresponding to the shape of the gas itself. The position of the lighter is important. If I move the lighter too close to the paper, the Schlieren image fades away. This is because the refracted light doesn't have a chance to move anywhere before hitting the paper. But if I move the lighter too far from the paper, the image again disappears. Not only that, but the shadow of the lighter also becomes blurrier. If you look at the sun, you'll see that it has some size to it. Light is coming from both this side of the sun and this side of the sun. Technically everywhere on the sun. And when that light comes down to meet the lighter, some of it's going this way, and some of it's going this way. The light going this way can sneak its way under the lighter and brighten up the edge of the lighter's shadow. The result is a blurry shadow. And the same thing happens when the light goes through the gas. But because the Schlieren image is so much smaller and not as dark as the shadow, it just completely disappears. One way to reduce this effect is to use a smaller light, like one on a smartphone. I propped my phone up so that it shines onto a piece of paper that I taped to the wall. I've also swapped the lighter for a candle so I don't have to hold down the lighter anymore. With this setup, I can move the candle almost anywhere in between the light and the paper and still see the Schlieren effect. But the Schlieren image will disappear if you get too close to the paper or the light. Before moving on, I want to try something. This might be the first Schlieren image ever captured on instant film. I'm going to put this up for auction on eBay if any of you want it, or just want to support the channel. The proceeds will go towards future videos, link in the description. Right now, we have a point light radiating light in all directions. Some of that light passes through the hot air from our candle and is refracted a little bit but this results in a pretty dim image on its own. One way we can make the image brighter is by using a magnifying lens. However, this does come at the cost of reducing the size of the image. Now we have a setup that allows us to project and resize a Schlieren image onto a piece of paper. There is one minor drawback to this method though. When the light hits the paper, it gets scattered in all directions. Most of the light just goes off to wherever and gets lost. But some of the light bounces off just right as to travel right into the camera, or your eyes, or whatever you kids are using to see these days. Instead of being at the mercy of what light the paper decides to throw our way, we can put the camera's image sensor directly in the path of the light, before it's reflected off the paper. This way, we get to use all of the light, and not just the stuff that happens to bounce our way. And this is what the camera sees. We now have a point light, a magnifying lens, and a camera. But we don't have a razor blade. In the typical setup, the razor blade goes right here, where the image of our point light is the smallest, where it's in focus. And just a tip when you're trying to set up a razor blade, if you're not in the right spot, you'll see a shadow of the razor blade. 
If the shadow is on the opposite side as the blade, then the blade is too close to the lens. And if they're on the same side, then the blade is too far from the lens. When you have it in just the right spot, it'll look like this, where the whole image darkens all at once. The most noticeable effect is that one side of our subject is now shadowed and the other is highlighted. This is due to how the refracted light interacts with the razor blade. A ray that was destined for the paper might get refracted into the razor blade instead. The area it would have hit appears darker. Likewise, a ray destined for the blade might get refracted onto the paper, resulting in a brighter area. Another effect is that the image becomes sharper or more clear, and this is often just assumed to be a result of the previous effect. If that were the case, the razor blade should be able to make the image sharper no matter what light we use. But in practice, it doesn't work that way. Here I have two lights set up side by side. One I covered with a piece of aluminum tape that I poked a pinhole in. The other I left wide open. And these are the Schlieren images they produce. When I cut the wide open light with the razor, it becomes about as sharp as the pinhole light. But when I try and cut the pinhole light, it's very difficult to position the razor correctly. And when it is correctly positioned, the image does not appear much sharper. Though now it has the characteristic shading of the razor blade. If we take a closer look at the razor blade, we'll see that when the image is the sharpest, the razor is blocking nearly all of the light, letting through only a very small, almost point-like section. Similarly, when we reduce the size of our light source, we also reduce the size of the image of our light source. So the thing that drives the sharpness of our image is not the razor blade, but how close our light source is to a true point light, which the razor blade can help us achieve. However, the razor blade is solely responsible for the highlighting shadowing effect. And look at that! We now have all the parts that make up the typical Schlieren setup. The point light is the most important part. It's the thing that creates the Schlieren effect. The size and brightness of your point light directly determines the quality of the Schlieren image. The candle refracts the light and gives us something to view. The lens simply redirects the light onto the image sensor of a camera, a piece of paper, or whatever you're using to view the image. But it also enables us to use the razor blade to apply a selective filter to certain refractions allowing us to highlight or shadow specific parts of whatever we're imaging. A lot of the Schlieren examples I've seen online use magnifying mirrors instead of magnifying lenses. I just happen to have lenses and not mirrors. But there are some advantages to using mirrors over lenses. If set up in just the right way, light will pass through whatever you're imaging twice, refracting it twice, doubling the Schlieren effect. But if you're not careful, you can end up with double image artifacts. There is a bit of a cheeky way we can simplify this setup. Part of the reason we had to remove the lens to capture the Schlieren image directly onto the camera was because the razor blade would have had to have been positioned inside of the lens. But what if I told you the lens actually has a razor blade built in? We can use the lens's aperture in place of the razor blade. And this is what the camera sees. I've got another, even cheekier way to simplify the setup further. It turns out you don't even need a point light. All you need is a magnifying lens and something that's high contrast. If you don't have anything that's high contrast, you can just draw one. Now aim the magnifying lens at the edge of your high contrast. Focus it so that the whole lens changes brightness at the same time. It helps if you put your subject near the lens when you're setting this up. When you get close, you'll start seeing the Schlieren effect. Then, it's just a matter of dialing in the magnifying lens. This particular version will only highlight and shadow features of your subject that are in line with the edge that you've focused on, like an extreme version of what the razor blade does. My favorite part about this setup is that you can actually view it with your naked eyes which really drives home the fact that Schlieren images are real and not some crazy arcane science artifact. By the way, do not try this with any setup involving a point light. That'd be the quickest way to go blind. I've got one last trick up my sleeve. 
This is another version of Schlieren that I haven't seen anywhere else, which I call Double Pinhole Schlieren. The setup is very similar to regular Schlieren, except instead of a razor blade, you use a pinhole lens. You also cover your light source with a matching pinhole lens. The result is a very sharp and very high contrast Schlieren image, which is sensitive to refractions in all directions. And here's the same setup captured directly by my camera's image sensor. This method is actually so sensitive that despite my crude methods and materials, it can pick up the heat from my hands. And it's not like it's super cold in here either. It's at least 70 degrees. That's about it. That's everything I've learned about Schlieren imaging. You don't really need anything except a point light, and the better the point light, the better the image. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. And if you want to support the channel further, consider sending a super thanks. Thanks for watching.